Hello, ladies, men, and non-binary friends. I'm going to be honest right off the bat. This is not going to be a chill video. I know you're used to my soothing voice and good vibes around here, but I have a lot of things to say, and most of them are not good. I have stayed away from Marvel for a few years by choice. After Loki came out, I was not impressed, and I felt like they compromised a character that I cared about very much. So I decided to step away from Marvel content altogether. They were going in a direction that I didn't like, and I didn't want to surround myself with that type of content. That's actually when I started watching anime, and for anyone who's also experiencing Marvel fatigue, I would highly recommend it. I know, I know, when you think of anime, you think of the weird kid who draws big titted anime girls in his notebook while mouth breathing at the back of the class, but I promise you, we're not all like that. And a lot of things that I liked about early Marvel I've found in these animes. Now, let's get into the video. The character assassination of Wanda Maximoff. This movie gave me fucking whiplash. Not only because they turned Wanda into an all-powerful version of Jack the fucking Ripper without any sort of bridge from where we saw her character last, but also because this movie used the exact same arc that Wanda had in WandaVision. Like, literally cut and paste. Which I guess makes sense because Sam Raimi, the director of this movie, admitted in multiple interviews that he didn't fucking watch WandaVision. Bro, are you fucking serious? You literally had two characters that you needed to study up on regarding the MCU canon. Wanda and Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange had one movie and a couple of appearances in IW and Endgame. And Wanda had collectively like, I don't know, 20 lines across three MCU movies in a full show where she was the main character. I'm gonna be honest, if I had to pick one for you to watch, I would have picked the fucking show. Are you stupid? You literally needed to put in the bare minimum of effort to study up on Wanda Maximoff and you couldn't even do that. Fuck you. And if you watched the goddamn show, number one, maybe you would have had more appreciation for her character and two, maybe you would have caught on that she went through the exact same arc just more poorly, in your three-hour hack film. For those of us in the audience who didn't watch WandaVision, or for Sam Raimi himself, let's review what took place in this show. I'm gonna tell the events in chronological order versus episodic order, because the events in WandaVision are purposefully told out of order to aid the narrative. But it makes much more sense to explain this chronologically for this video. WandaVision takes place post-Endgame after many families have been reunited with their loved ones that they lost during the blip. Such a dumb fucking name, I can't. Did anyone ever say this out loud before writing it? Like, sorry. Not what this video is about. Despite this, Wanda is completely and utterly alone. She lost her parents when she was a child, she lost her twin brother, and only remaining family in Sokovia after joining the Avengers. After this devastating loss, she dedicated her life to the Avengers and fighting the injustices in the world. This is when she starts to fall in love with her robot boyfriend Vision and finds companionship with someone for the first time since her brother died. Fast forward to Infinity War. She's forced to go through the emotional toll of murdering the love of her life to stop Thanos from getting the Infinity Stone that's in his head. Which, actually, lol JK didn't even matter anyway because Thanos just rewound time with the Time Stone that Doctor Strange gave him and had to kill Vision anyway. And Wanda had to watch Vision die for a second time knowing that his death meant absolutely nothing. So, that's fucking cool. Wanda Maximoff, riddled with devastation and grief after having to sacrifice the love of her life in vain to try to save the world and being in the unique position of not getting him back a few years later like many others did, she's doing her best to process that. She goes to S.W.O.R.D. headquarters to retrieve Vision's lifeless body so she can give him a proper burial. They vehemently deny her, claiming that he is the property of the government now, which is dehumanizing and very American, if you ask me. This isn't fair that Vision, her Vision, can't even get a proper burial, and his lifeless body is being experimented on without dignity. Despite being absolutely crushed, she leaves without a fuss or a fight and drives to Westview to an empty plot, and we learn that Vision bought this plot in hopes of building a life with Wanda. The town doesn't look particularly appealing. The people in the town look troubled and generally unhappy, but clearly this didn't matter to Wanda or Vision. They just needed each other. Wanda, overcome with grief and sadness, collapses to the ground, weeping for her lost lover, finally recognizing that she is alone. No one's coming for her. No one will save her. No one cares. She's truly lost everything. Letting out one final scream, her grief manifests into a safe haven created by her mind and what we know as the first episode of WandaVision, a 1950s sitcom starring her and the love of her life that she once thought lost. Her mind, surely percolating with questions but too overcome with her own happiness to acknowledge them. Is this a dream? Has she died and gone to heaven? How can she stay in this blissful dreamscape? The first few episodes follow the same structure as sitcoms through the ages, quickly evolving into more advanced and more elaborate sets, costumes, 
and camera work as Wanda's magic grows stronger. She gets married to Vision, gets pregnant, has two twin boys, and lives out a self-contained domestic life. Once she starts to realize that she's in control of the world she's created, she gets greedy. She pulls the strings further and Vision starts to notice. He notices that there's something off about this world and that people seem almost afraid of Wanda. He digs further and realizes that Wanda is controlling this entire reality. He tries to get her to stop and she assures that it's not a problem and that she has everything under control. She does not. Fast forward to It Was Agatha All Along, absolute banger. The show's exceptional, but the show's worth the watch just to see this song in all its glory. Agatha frees some of the residents of Westview from Wanda's spell, and they beg and plead her to stop her spell, saying that they can feel her pain and grief, and it's torturing them. Wanda is devastated and in complete and utter shock. She realizes that she hasn't actually been helping this disparaged town in the way that she thought she had. Her pain that has tortured her and been built up for years and years has now been inflicted on this entire town. We learn three things about Wanda's spell at this point. Number one, Wanda doesn't consciously realize that something was off until the end of episode one when the boss starts choking. When this happens, she looks visibly confused and frightened and Wanda slowly becomes more aware of her control of this reality as the episodes progress. Number two, Wanda has no idea that the people she was hypnotizing were in pain. She thought that she was making their lives better, happier, allowing them to live out a domestic sitcom with no consequences or conflict beyond the occasional comedic domestic spat. Number three, when she did realize that these people were in pain, she put an end to it. Let me say that again. When Wanda realized that she was hurting people, she put an end to her spell on Westview. Wanda gave up her dream, her perfect life, everything she wanted because she knew the consequences of forcing it to become reality. She knew it was wrong. She knew that damage had been done and she tried to fix it. She freed everyone. She gave up the love of her life again and her children because she knew it was the right thing to do and that no one should have that power. Then she isolated herself in the middle of the woods because she knew that she was a danger to those around her and she wanted to learn how to control her magic. So something like Westview never happened again. So not only does Multiverse of Madness just retell the same arc, but worse, it also completely invalidates any and all growth Wanda experienced. This movie essentially acts like WandaVision didn't happen, which is so frustrating because myself and millions of other viewers really enjoyed this show. On top of that, Multiverse of Madness basically just means that fucking Tyler Hayward was right. This fucking bag of chodes is now completely justified in his assumption that he should have killed Wanda. Like... This guy? This guy who literally told Monica Rambo to her face, quote, Maybe it's a good thing you weren't here when your mother died, because you clearly don't have the stomach for this job. I could fucking vomit. The fanboys jerk off about how Sam Raimi is so different and so unique, but you know what was different and unique and really tried to do something new with Marvel? Fucking WandaVision! The show did it first, and it didn't have to completely violate a character's previous arcs to do so. Did anyone else see the articles talking about the reshoots for this movie because the audiences fucking tore it apart and hated it so much? So this was round two. They This was them trying really hard to make it better. Fucking embarrassing. Now that we've covered WandaVision, let's move on to the character assassination of Wanda Maxima. Michael Waldron, Daenerys Targaryen, my best girl. There was absolutely no bridge, no reason why Wanda would go down this self-destructive path again. Immediately after her last screened appearance, where she experienced the same thing. I could have accepted her going bad if it was done with a little bit more dignity. I think she would make the perfect badass villain. But you can't go from this. No, that's not true. I've, I've kept you safe in here. You feel at peace. We feel your pain. No. Your grief is poisoning us. No, stop. No. No. Stop. Stop. Oh. I will let you go. I will. I will. Boys, thanks for choosing me to be your mom. They'll never know what you sacrificed for them. It wouldn't change how they see me. I'm sorry. For all the pain I caused. I don't understand this power, but I will. Goodbye, Monica. To this! No. And 
know y'all are gonna jump down my throat about the dark hold, so okay, let's talk about the dark hold. It is explicitly said in the movie that the dark hold, quote, uses your deepest desires and corrupts you completely. And that, quote, its influence is almost inescapable. When Doctor Strange had to use the dark hold, everyone was like, oh, please, please don't go to the dark side. We love you. Take my hand, Steven. But Wanda? No, she's just a crazy bitch. She deserves to die. Like, huh? Are we really gonna do the evil crazy lady thing? And for what? For her ending to be, oh no, I'm horrible. I'm a horrible vile monster. Time for me to kill myself in the span of five minutes? You had a three hour movie to give us closure and you wicked witch of the east did her? That's it? Give me a fucking break. But wait, if quote, the dark hold corrupts the reader, then Strange should get in more trouble than the souls of the damned, right? Nope. We get one establishing shot of him screaming as he grows a third eye, but in the next shot, he's perfectly fine. In fact, he's getting recruited by fucking Charlize Theron. It's not treated as something that's made him corrupted or evil. It's treated as a fucking power-up. If destroying the Darkhold erased Strange's sins, shouldn't it do the same for Wanda? No? Cool. <sighs> Part two, white man sad. From the beginning of the movie, the narrative is structured so the audience understands that Strange's life is sad and that he's a very sad boy because he didn't get to marry that one girl he liked. And yeah, he's a super powerful sorcerer and he's got friends and he's one of the saviors of the world, but he's really sad because he couldn't marry Christine. Bro, Christine didn't even want to be with you because you were toxic and needed to work on yourself. I'm so fucking angry about this movie, it's making me parched. Meanwhile, Wanda basically lived out the goddamn Hunger Games and had to kill the love of her life to save the world and watch him be killed again. She's denied any sense of closure when they refuse to give her his body for burial. She mourns the happy life that they were going to live together. She's so overcome with grief that her reality warps into this sitcom fever dream. She creates two twin boys that she loves as her own, raises them as a protective loving mother with her husband that she thought lost, and oh yeah, she has to give them all up again. And she does it. Willingly! And then we're not supposed to show any compassion for Wanda and all the compassion for Strange? We get a whole team of people feeling bad for Strange, trying to bring him back to the light once he's touched the dark hold. Oh, I've got your hand, I've got you, we're here for you, Steven. And after one interaction, Strange is like, we've lost Wanda. And that's just it? No other attempt to appeal to her humanity? The misogyny in this writing is so fucking apparent because of course, women can't be trusted with power. They're far too emotional and hysterical. And if female characters have powers, their only course of action is to destroy the world. Sorry, Strange, but your trauma does not compare. I do not fucking feel bad for you. You have not had it as hard as Wanda, and Wanda was a much nicer person than you, despite her circumstances. Does everyone forget that Strange is still kind of a dick? Like, he hasn't really become a better person. He's learned patience, I guess, that one time. But other than that, <laughs> no, not, not, no sense of character growth in sight. Part three, Marvel can't write women. Marvel has proven over and over again that they just don't care about their female characters. They don't care about their POC characters either, but let's just stick with women for now because I truly don't have enough strength to turn over that rage bomb just yet. Wanda Maximoff in the Multiverse of Madness is clearly and unabashedly written in misogyny. Firstly, her entire character is written around her being a psycho mommy dearest. That's it. I'm not a monster, Steven. I'm a mother. Her only motivation in this movie is because she's a mother. What about Pietro? What about Vision? Pietro isn't even mentioned at all, and Vision isn't mentioned by name. But of course, Thanos is mentioned like 10 times, and he doesn't even have anything to do with this fucking story. Like, come on. Again, I blame Sam Raimi and Michael Waldron for having zero stake in her character and ignoring all past canon in the MCU. Wanda was the most complex character still in the MCU, and this, this is what you do to her? Embarrassing! Part 4, The Downfall of Marvel. I've become so fatigued with Marvel projects. I'm honestly pretty sick of these unnecessarily larger-than-life stories. Loki, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange. Marvel is currently buckling under its own legacy and trying to create new endgames with every new movie that they're making and obviously failing because the beauty of Infinity War and Endgame was that it was the culmination of years of buildup and filmmaking, character writing, and development. It's not supposed to be a movie that you remake every two or three years. Marvel is at its best and strongest with self-contained stories focusing on a small group of characters. You can't deny the impact of Infinity War and Endgame, but Infinity War and Endgame aren't Marvel's best movies. So why do they keep trying to make these larger-than-life stories? Because those are the ones that make the most money. I used to be a massive Marvel fan, and I've noticed the steep decline in Marvel content since the conclusion of its previous phase. I didn't have high hopes for this movie. 
but I wasn't expecting to leave the theater completely devastated either. Marvel has continued to prove that it's incapable of harnessing its greatest potential its characters. I guess they just couldn't handle that a girl was stronger than their self-insert white male characters could ever be. So what did they do? What they always do. Kill her off. Multiverse of Madness had the potential to be great, and it's disappointing to see Marvel continuously squander the potential of these characters. And the worst part is, there were aspects of this movie that I actually really liked. I liked the horror elements. I really liked the cinematography. There were actually a few good jokes that didn't make me want to kill myself. But it seemed like every part that I enjoyed was tainted with something that I really fucking didn't. When you take away the flashy CGI, the campy Sam Raimi camera shots, and the horror aspect, you're left with a story that is weak at its best and character compromising at its worst. The lackluster success of this film will surely discourage Marvel from doing new things in the future, which was upsetting because the new stuff was actually really good. Just stop paying Michael Waldron millions of dollars to write terrible fucking scripts and maybe encourage your future directors to study up on the characters a little bit more seriously. People fell in love with the MCU all those years ago because you respected the source material and told incredible stories. You're not doing that anymore and that's ultimately why you're going to fail your audience. I'm just, I'm just so exhausted. If you like this video, you can help me pay my rent with the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Bye.